Hey, Martin. Hey, uh, How you doing? Woo. How are Welcome you? Welcome to Switzerland. Welcome hey. to Switzerland. Nice Good to, to see you, you mate. You Good too. to see you. Welcome, mate. Hi, guys. This I'm is Scott. Hi, Scott. Look, Megan. Hi. Hi. How are you? Nice to see you at last. I'm Martin Roberts, uh, probably best known in the UK as a property TV presenter and uh, expert. But previous to that, I was a full-time travel journalist. I used to present a, a travel show called Wish You Were Here on ITV for many years and developed a real love of travelling. And one of the types of travelling that I fell in love with was skiing. And uh, so it's really great that that's been passed down uh, to my family. And uh, they were lucky enough to start skiing at a really young age. Scott, who's now 14, started when he was about five. And Megan, who's now 12, started when she was around four. So along with my wife, Kirsty, we are the Ski Family Roberts. I'm in Amsterdam, uh, and, uh, around, you know, uh, called in Amsterdam to force. What about this idea of, of having to get a train uh, to where we ski? Because in the past, we've often been quite close to where we ski. So what do you think about that? Well, it's definitely nice to have a bit of a change because normally we can just leave our skis outdoors, uh, outside the hotel and just basically ski from the front door. But this time it's nice because we can get on a train, it's quite close and we can see the whole, like out the windows, we can see the amazing views as we go up the mountain, which we don't normally get. And what are you looking forward to this trip? Um, well, we haven't been skiing in like two years, so... Honestly, just skiing is amazing and I'm excited to, you know, as if we can try new things. And Scotty, can I just ask you, what, what are you looking forward to this trip? Uh, the off piece and look at going through the mountains because there's like, you can already see when we're going up the chairlifts, but there's loads of areas where you can definitely do some really, really hard but fun off piece and the powder is just lovely because it's been snowing. Yeah. So this is the Schweizer Ski and Snowboard School and we're about to meet Marcel who is the head ski instructor and uh, he's going to give us a bit of orientation and also uh, later on uh, during our time here is going to actually give Scott a very, very special uh, experience all about maybe becoming a ski instructor but more about later. But now it's time to get fitted out with their skis and boots and uh, Chris has got some new skis so she's going to have to have them sort of fitted to her boots and uh, yeah. Uh, making sure the skis and the boots fit suitable for their level of expertise and luckily my kids have been skiing since they were four, uh, four and five um, so um, they are you know for a 12 and a 14 year old doing pretty well but we haven't said they haven't skied for two years uh, but I'd say they're, you know, they're probably intermediate now. That's, uh, it'd be interesting to see how they get on. The last time we came, uh, they were in size two boots, and now Scott is in a size eight. Size <laughs> <laughs> nine. Oh, no, sorry, size nine. But look at these. Oh, gosh. Kids' shoes are all so sweet, aren't they? Uh, Swiss slippers. Perfect. I wonder if they've got them in a ten. Heated gloves. Now it's actually not that cold. I don't think I quite need these, but so James Bond, right? <laughs> One of the kids are being fitted out and have a look round upstairs. Above the ski school, like a shop full of just exactly what you'd hope for uh, in Switzerland. Uh, <laughs> cowbells over there. Look at these ones here. That's very massive. Superb, a little authentic, but of course, one of the main things you can't come to Switzerland. No, cuckoo clocks, amazing, amazing. They're interesting, they range from like 89 Swiss francs to 9,500. Now, I think it's roughly ish one Swiss franc to a pound. So, uh, it's almost 10,000 quid for a clock. Definitely below the holiday budget. <laughs> so, 
So this is another thing that Switzerland's famous for. Swiss army knives. And Kent and Vengen, I do remember. It actually says somewhere on the thing that I'm made in Vengen. But anyway. Uh, Swiss made, but anyway, whatever. Um, I mean, I, you know, I remember these when I was a kid. And just, there was nothing quite like a Swiss army knife. Wow. Good to be back on the ski lifts! So not skiing for about two years and yeah a little bit a uh, little bit rusty. The first few runs always uh, always gonna be a little bit difficult. Yeah you kind of think I've forgotten how to do this. Body says what are you doing? I mean usual stuff. Uh, and it's also today the light is very flat so it's very hard to see where you're actually going uh, but anyway hey as usual kids are beating me hands down falling back into it like ducks to a water ducks to water taking it to duck well you know what i mean <laughs> like a snow rabbit to the snow maybe that's a better uh, analogy anyway uh, yeah, in the zoo, it's to carry on skiing! <laughs> First hot chocolate of the trip! <laughs> Tell me about your ski experience. Oh, right. Well, I started skiing when I was an adult, actually. I wasn't fortunate enough to go as a, as a child, like our two children have, um, and was pretty much self-taught. <laughs> so, um, yeah, did it a few times, and then when Martin and I uh, got together, we that was something that we enjoyed doing together on holiday and so on. So we were both skiers, and I suppose quite regular skiers, before we had the children. Um, and then it stopped, obviously, because we had um, you know babies. Um, and then I think somebody actually mentioned to us, when Scott was about four or five, um, about how amazing it would be to take the children skiing because in that point we were thinking that we would probably need to just wait a few more years. So I'm trying to think of their ages but I think the Scott was probably about five and Megan was probably about three when we took our first ski trip with them and well I mean it just just uh, you know we've never looked back really. <laughs> it was a, an amazing thing to do as a family. So that's the first few runs under our belts. How are we all feeling? Good. Yeah. What? Bit creaky. Creaky. Mm. Yeah. And the kids, Megan? Good. Yeah. So time for a beer and the hot chocolate. Yeah, well, you know, it's game for at least 15 minutes. Joking. An hour and a half or so. An hour and a half. Yeah, Starling. Yep. The Toberone didn't last long. One little tip, um, the food in the, I mean it's the same everywhere I guess, but it seems to be extremely more so here, the food in the on uh, piece restaurant is humongously expensive, like £18.50 for, um, well, it's a fish bank, but you know, I've, I've translated, £18.50 for um, chips and chicken nuggets, uh, £5 for a, for a coffee, so pack a flask and pack your sandwiches. Obviously, it's also very, very busy at peak times, so avoid the lunch app. Lunch, <laughs> even the lunch app. <laughs> I 
of course, you've always got to make time. It's actually snowing. <laughs> that means it's going to be amazing over the next few days. Right now, we should think about leaving the mountain. <laughs> Snow angels. So, why do you like skiing? Uh, I love skiing because it's a great way to get around the mountain, and it's really thrilling. Tell me how you got into skiing. Uh, well, I first got into skiing when my mum and dad brought me out when I was about five, and I've been doing it every year since. And what do you think of it as a holiday? It's absolutely brilliant, I love it. It's so different from most holidays because it's in the snow and it's like up in the mountains instead of like beach holidays. Right, so given a choice, what would you do holiday-wise? I like skiing. Right. Megan, same thing for you. Tell me about what you think about skiing. It's really nice and you can, through the stages you can get better and you can, it, you can make your skiing better and try more, you can challenge yourself more. You're quite an active person, aren't you? So, does that, does that, is, that, is that sort of one of the appeals for you about it? Um, well, I think, personally, being active is obviously helps you get with skiing. And, I mean, I basically love any sport, so I am always trying my hardest. Um, tell me about your ski experience and how you got started. Well, same as Scott, I, my mum and dad took me, and I started when I was three, and finished ski school and that really helped and we've been going ever, every year since. What is it about it you love? Well I love to challenge myself and I can always rely on skiing to help with that because I can do blacks, I can you know slow it down and do blues or greens and I just love the you know the thrill of it and you know and you fall and you just pick yourself back up. Kirsty, how are you feeling? Yeah, good! Ah, stop! Well, it's like okay, getting pummeled in snowballs. Apart from that, really good. It's snowing. It's snowing. It was very Christmassy. Coming I mean, down through the trees yeah. in the snow. Uh, away from the more commercial places to eat, on the mountains you do come across just the most charming little spots. I've got to show you this bar. Absolutely great. It's called the Holzer Bar. Really old fashioned, fantastic. Just a small place. But the best thing about this, look at this for a bit of art or a display. In Switzerland, with lots of trees, what would you make a sculpture out of? That's right. Chainsaws. How awesome is that? So find this on the mountain, stop here, have a hot chocolate or whatever. Brilliant. Even if it does cost five, uh, five francs. <laughs> So behind me is the terminus for the new Eiger Express. It's a cable car that takes you from uh, the Grindelwald terminus station. So actually the train comes right in to that point there. It links up with this fantastic new cable car. 80 million pounds and six years worth of effort. Uh, but what it does is it links Grindelwald here with the very top of the ski area. It means that you can basically come up from Interlaken or where we're staying get off at Terminus, don't go to Grindelwald like we did first time, <clears throat> uh, but then just hop on this and then the cable car there just takes you all the way up pretty much to the highest uh, level of the ski area here. So it's a very efficient way uh, to get yourself up on the mountain. So a brilliant investment for the area. <laughs> so I need to let you in on a bit of a dilemma that I've got. Um, I've come down off the mountain, I'm feeling pretty tired. It's really important, if you are feeling tired, uh, that uh, you don't do the big bravado thing. You stop. You get yourself down. You remember, what, remember what they say, most accidents happen on the last run of the day when you're tired. So I'm tired. The kids and Kirsty have got resilience, so they're carrying on skiing. So I've come down in the Iger Express, the new lift, and at the bottom they've built this amazing terminal, okay, with lots of shops and and things and it's a brilliant connection point because not only does it link to the the train that takes you back down uh, uh, to well all the way to Interlaken um, but also um, 
it connects to another ski lift, uh, a bubble that takes you up to a different part of the mountain. So it's a brilliant, brilliant sort of central hub for connections. Anyway, back to that dilemma. At this uh, terminal, it's called the terminal, uh, or terminus, can't remember, anyway, one or the other. Um, there are a load of shops, as I said, and one of them is this. So we're in Switzerland. There's a whole shop dedicated to lint chocolates. Let's just have a quick look inside. Oh my Lord. If you like your chocolates, there's even a seat that you can sit down and actually have chocolates in here. More chocolates than you can shake a chocolate reindeer at. Oh my gosh. Look at this, an entire wall of those lint sort of bauble things. Now, the dilemma is this. Kirsty and the kids are, well, especially Kirsty, chocoholics, complete chocoholics. So here's my debate. Do I tell them about this place or not? Do I? Meanwhile, I think I feel a chocoholic attack coming on. So I'm with Carl, the owner of the amazing place we've been staying in. Tell me about this hotel. Um, thank you, Martin. Yeah, I was fortunate enough to accidentally walk past it eight years ago when it was for sale. Wow. And I then uh, convinced the, the then owner to, to sell it to me. And that's how everything started. So um, I am the proud owner now of the Alpen Rose Hotel and Gardens, who is uh, 125 years old this year. So. Wow. I mean, when you walk down the street, uh, you just come across this building and you go, Whoa. Yeah. it is so beautiful and so sort of typical of the area. Um, and you've managed to keep a lot of the sort of that feeling of very authentic. Is that, is that what you were aiming for? Uh, absolutely. Um, the, the hotel has a, has a great history of um, hosting guests from all over the world. Um, but, but in the sort of uh, late 1900s, um, they started to try and be too modern. And actually kind of the decor became a little bit strange. So when I got here, I had to almost wind down the clock a bit and try and bring a bit of classic Swiss furniture in and a, um, a, a, a bit of a boutique feeling. Um, because my location is in a beautiful village that, that where guests kind of want to see not a modern sort of uh, uh, hotel, but something more classic. Yeah. So I had to wind on the clock, but at the same time, I also had to kind of just refurbish the rooms and bring in Wi-Fi and, 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 and stuff like that. So. What do you put underneath the floorboards to make them creak so effectively? <laughs> That's not, I didn't do anything. That's just a ghost at night. So. <laughs> ah, that'll be it then. Actually, people will pay more for that. Then. Yeah, true, true. No, it's charming. Um, uh, but, but also, you know, you, you, as you say, you've got all those modern things if you need it. Yeah. yeah. So what, what kind of experience do you try and give people when they come here? Well, look, um, because it was constructed 125 years ago, the rooms are not massive. And my whole philosophy is I don't want you to sit in the room. I want you to come out and, and, and enjoy the, the spaces downstairs, enjoy the restaurant, but especially enjoy the garden. So I've designed a garden um, because we have stunning views of the glaciers. I want people to be in, in the garden. So whether it's winter or summer, enjoy the views, enjoy the, the, the hot tub in the garden as well. Um, and also sort of um, here in Switzerland, um, people kind of still cultivate their own vegetables. Uh, and that's why I have a bit of a vegetable plot. I don't know if you notice it, a, a herb garden, and then sort of a more formal garden, even a rose garden. So I really want people to come out and just enjoy nature. Um, and not sit in their room. So. And let's talk about the area a little bit. Um, it, it's, it's a great location to explore the skiing. Yeah. And I imagine at other times of the year, just the nature of this area, isn't yeah. it? Just like a little bit outside Interlaken, but almost like at a, at a junction, allowing you to go lots of different exactly. directions. Yeah, it's like a double valley, but um, uh, this region is almost like the Eiffel Tower of Switzerland. Like, like the Jungfrau York has become a bucket list experience for many people around the world. So especially in summers, we are um, firstly a summer destination and secondly a win winter destination. Okay. So in summer, there are so many attractions. We are the only uh, one of only two cities in the world that's between lakes. So the lakes bring um, a lot of visitors who want to experience that. And then um, different mountains. I was talking to someone this morning saying that we are three-dimensional tourism like you have stuff in the valleys you have stuff in the middle mountains and then you have the glaciers so there's so many things you can do in this region so 
So yeah, there's something for everybody. Um, Interlaken is also known as the adventure capital of the world. So if you want to jump off mountains, jump out of airplanes, go down the rivers, there's everything, uh, something for everybody. So, Somebody said yeah. to me, you've got Queenstown in New Zealand and you've got Interlaken here in Switzerland. Yeah. As the, the sort of similar kind of True. places to go if you are a complete adrenaline junkie. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and there are sort of, you don't need to be an expert to experience this adventure here. Um, what is very trendy these days, e-bikes. Mm. Um, not expensive to rent here, or normal bikes, if that's your thing as well. And hiking, um, so, so anybody can participate in an adventure. But if you are sort of a freak that want to jump off, off cliffs, freak. Um, we have the, the best base, ju base jumping in the world. Oh, well. really? Oh, wow. Yeah, so something for everybody. Yeah, yeah. You can even surf on the lake. They, they'll have a boat that makes a wake, and you can even do surfing <laughs> in the lakes. <laughs> Wow, um, but the uh, the looks like the the ski uh, facilities have had a bit of a major upgrade of late. Absolutely, absolutely. I always say to everybody, like um, I believe we have the best skiing facilities in the world, and that is because um, the the accessibility to the slopes, but the quality of the chairlifts. Um, I'm sure you experienced it yourself the past week. We have a lot of uh, quad uh, chairlifts, six seater chairlifts. Um, so the infrastructure is amazing and we recently opened the Iger Express, mm. which is the newest, fastest uh, gondola in the world. Um, 27 persons every minute can go up to 2,500 uh, meters above sea level, where you can go down blue slopes, red slope, black slope. Uh, so from a skiing point of view, 240 kilometers of groomed slopes in four places with a stunning backdrop. Mm. Um, I really think it's it's one of the best in the world. So. And also, you can find places where if it is a little bit crowded at any particular time, there's yep. lots of places off the beaten track that you can go to the four exactly. main centres. And of course, you've got the, the history of, of places like Wengen. Uh, yeah, with the, the so it's not just skiing, it's that Swiss charm, mm. the, the after skiing, which is really nice. Um, whether you're a family or a group of friends, um, it, there is, there's something for everybody again when it comes to skiing as well. So. Yeah, yeah, and then you, you get that sense of history. Yeah. And uh, obviously there's lots of chocolate. Yeah, yeah, there are lots of chocolate places as well that, that will show you how, the, how to make chocolate and how to eat chocolate. <laughs> <So>. <laughs> yeah, you ski off of calories during the day and you eat it all True. when True. you visit the shops. Yeah. Uh, but um, one of the things which I, I, I has really impressed me as well about, about you and this place is you are trying to keep it affordable, aren't you? Because yeah. for a lot of people, especially families, it can be quite an expensive country to visit. True, exactly. And um, Interlaken and Jungfrau region generally is a slightly more affordable region, especially for skiing and in summer, more three stars, more four stars, and the hostels. But my philosophy with the hotel also is, um, uh, I didn't grow up in Switzerland, so I know how expensive it, it can be. So I, I don't want to just give lower prices, but I do want to give more value. Um, and, uh, and yeah, and, and that's kind of, I, th I think we succeed. Um, also, when it comes to food, we have the Swiss food, but we also have an in international menu. We even have a touch of South Africa um, <laughs> for those who kind of want to eat good meat, maybe. Um, but yeah, that is my philosophy. The philosophy is like, sure, we're a budget three-star hotel, but we have a jacuzzi for you to enjoy. Mm. Um, we have a nice garden. We have direct views of the glacier. So I think that's that's important, and, and that's also why we have the best review score in the whole region. So oh wow, that's yeah. something very proud of. Is yeah, that on like Trustpilot and things like that? Uh, yeah, uh, Booking.com, Expedia, um, we're up there. Um, so my staff, I'm, I I employ. We kind of want to want. It's not so difficult. We just want the guests <laughs> to feel like uh, the cliche it's home from home, and um, and and we want to know why do why do the guests come here? What do they want to do? And if, if, you, if you want to jump off cliffs, if, if, you, if it's a family holiday, if you want to cycle, then we have to give you the, the we, we have to assist you in finding the right experience. And I think that's what the guests like is we interact, we ask, we help and we point them in the right direction. So. Well, we've yeah. certainly felt that. So thank you very much for your kind yeah, hospitality. You're welcome. And it's we hope to really, see you guys soon again. You so. will most definitely. Now we've found it, we'll be back. <laughs> awesome. <laughs>